You're listening to Ireland's Aviation Podcast. Welcome to Episode 6 of our second season of Short Final from Squawk 7000. On this week's podcast, new routes for Dublin, if the Irish Community Air Ambulance have their busiest month to date, and the Air Corps released the first photos of their new Airbus Defence C-195. Ryanair has announced four new routes from Dublin due to start this winter. Dublin to Cardiff will operate four times weekly starting on the 31st of October. The other new routes announced will operate twice weekly to Plovdiv in Bulgaria, Koshka in Slovakia and Sibiu in Romania. This winter Ryanair will operate over 720 weekly flights to over 90 destinations across their network from Dublin. Staying with Dublin news, Emirates has announced that it will increase its Dubai to Dublin service to a daily flight for the first time since March 2020. The daily service will be restored from the 5th of October. Emirates has been operating the route since 2013, initially with an Airbus A330, followed by a Boeing 777. Norwegian have announced their schedule for the summer of 2022, which includes the return of Dublin with services to Oslo and Copenhagen. They will return initially with four services per week on these routes. Since the pandemic began, the airline has not operated to Dublin and has significantly shrunk to focus on domestic services within Norway and just a couple of international routes. Norwegian will offer 259 routes from the Nordics next summer. And the first aircraft for the new Norwegian airline Norse Atlantic Airways was rolled out of the paint hangar in Shannon last week. The aircraft to Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner, Lima November, Lima November Oscar, was previously operated by Norwegian and stored in Shannon since the 11th of November 2020, when it arrived from storage in Copenhagen. The aircraft has not flown any revenue flights since the 18th of March 2020. The Dreamliner is owned by leasing company Aircap, which has agreed to lease nine of the type to Norse Atlantic Airways. The new airline has since signed an agreement to take a further six Dreamliners on lease from BOC Aviation. Aer Lingus has returned to Washington Dulles Airport with a new service operating four times per week using the Airbus A321NX. The first flight was operated from Dublin by Echo India Lima Romeo Bravo. Aer Lingus will also restart services from Shannon to London Heathrow with flights showing on their booking system available from Monday the 13th of September. These will be the first commercial flights from Shannon by Aer Lingus since March 2020. In July, 658,000 passengers passed through Dublin Airport as travel restrictions eased, an 81% reduction compared to July 2019. Passenger volumes to and from continental Europe fell by 76% as 462,000 passengers travelled, while UK traffic declined by 87% with almost 118,000 passengers travelling. Passenger volumes to and from North America decreased by 87% and traffic to and from the Middle East was down by 86%. Domestic traffic was down 95%, while just 500 passengers travelled to Donegal or Kerry. 1.7 million passengers have travelled through Dublin so far this year, 91% lower than pre-pandemic figures. Provisional air traffic figures from Eurocontrol have indicated a strong rebound in air traffic in Europe over the last few weeks. In their traffic forecast for the remainder of 2021, published on the 1st of June, the organisation forecasted in the best-case scenario that traffic for July would be 64% of 2019 figures. That forecast was very accurate, with 65% achieved, and so far for August, traffic is running 1% ahead of expectation at 70%. Overall, flight numbers are still 30% below those seen in 2019. However, some airlines are much closer to 2019 numbers. Whiz Air leads the market with just a 7% reduction in flights, followed by Pegasus at 8%, and Ryanair and Turkish at 15%. SAS and Lufthansa are the hardest hit, with a 60% and 50% fewer flights, respectively. It's worth noting that these figures refer to flights and not passenger numbers, which are still significantly below 2019. Even still, the strong rebound in flight numbers has to be seen as a good thing. 23,515 flights were operated on Wednesday, the 11th of August 2021, a 2% increase over the preceding two weeks. Ryanair, the busiest operator, added the most capacity over two weeks with 174 extra flights, followed by EasyJet with 109 and Vueling with 56. Spain saw the largest number of departing and arriving flights, followed by Germany and France. By comparison, on the 10th of August, US passenger airline departures were 19% below 2019 levels, with domestic down 17% and international down 35%. The domestic US load factor of 89% has returned to pre-pandemic levels. The DAA has issued an advisory notice about forthcoming activities on and around the North Runway site as part of the installation of the instrument landing system. Flight calibration of the ILS will be undertaken during daylight hours from Monday to Friday this week, weather permitting. The flights will involve a small twin-engined aircraft taking off and landing using the existing operational runways, not the north runway. 
It will then make multiple approaches to both east and west ends of the North Runway site at no lower than a height of 100 feet and then undertaking several passes of the runway at around 50 feet. The flights will be carried out by Flight Calibration Services Limited, who have already calibrated the navigation aids in the vicinity of the new runway. This week, the Air Corps released the first photos of the new Airbus Defence C-295 aircraft on the production line at the factory in Seville. The order for two new C-295 aircraft was placed in December 2019 and are due for delivery in 2023. They will replace the two Casa 235 aircraft operating in the maritime patrol role since their delivery in 1994. The principal role of the C-295 will be maritime surveillance. However, the Air Corps will provide a wide range of services, including logistics support, transport of troops and equipment, medical evacuation and air ambulance, search and rescue and general utility roles. July was the busiest month for the Irish Community Air Ambulance with 57 taskings. Geographically, County Cork required 18 taskings. Kerry had 11 and 9 for Tipperary. Since the service started operating in July 2019, the service has continued to get busier and the arrival of the new faster Augusta 109 helicopter has helped to increase response times. Well, joining me now is Michal Sheridan, CEO with the service. Michal, welcome back to Squawk 7000. Since we spoke to you last, it's been a busy time. It certainly has. And as you just said, July for us was was an incredibly busy month. In fact, I remember a few days during that month where the guys were en route back and dropped in, refueled and were, were gone again and were on a live tasking straight away. So um, I think our busiest day was the 24th. I think we had we had five taskings, which would which would be an incredibly busy day, considering that those are quite geographically dispersed, those those taskings. So, yeah, really busy. And and again, there's similar types of calls than we're experiencing all the time, but but certainly what we saw was a rise in RTC numbers just in comparison to most months, and particularly actually in the southeast. I think in four days we were in we were actually in Wexford for three or four RTCs, so a busy month all around. And these road traffic collisions, as you describe them, would be probably because more people are back out on the roads, of course. I think it was that definitely the volume. I think the other thing, obviously, was you remember that was a very very it was a very hot week in in July, which was our busiest week. You know, so you have a lot of people moving on the roads, maybe going a little bit too fast. Tar is melting, loose chippings, all those kind of things really are just uh, just factors in, in including that. And again, you know, we still saw high numbers, about the same numbers of taskings for RT or for cardiac arrest and what we would call cardiovascular, which would be strokes and the most serious type of heart attack, which is a STEMI heart attack. Michal, what's the typical cost of one of those taskings? Uh, the typical cost, so the average cost across our year per tasking is three and a half thousand euro. Uh, how we reach that figure is the actual running cost for the air ambulance, the HEM service itself, this year is projected to be in the region about 1.55 million. And last year we were tasked 490 times. This year so far, uh, we've seen about a 10% increase in our tasking. So we were expecting to be tasked over 500 times. We're on track. I think even by the end of July, it was at 344. So it's it's definitely getting busier. Look, the, the, the sad reality is people are having accidents and medical emergencies and our role and job is to be there. But obviously the busier we are, uh, the more our costs go up. And, and as you know from talking to us before, uh, currently we're 100% charity funded. So, you know, that's uh, while we're not going to refuse a call, that's certainly putting us under f- um, a little bit of financial pressure. Well, now today, as we're recording this, people have been celebrating their colours in the hurling. Your colours are red and yellow and you've been a bit creative with your fundraising for the next month, I think. What's happening? Yeah, we have. So International Air Ambulance Week happens in September. So we've picked, uh, and typically it's a lot, it's an eight day week. Who, who knew? So it's, yeah, from the 6th to the 14th of September, it's it's Air Ambulance Week. And, and we have a couple of initiatives planned both for that week and also for the month of September. During, on the 10th of September, for example, uh, we've asked schools across the country uh, to get involved in Wear Red or Yellow Day. Uh, so I'm a parent and we just wanted to make it simple. So all you have to do is find something red or something yellow for your child to wear. It can be a T-shirt or a hat or a jersey. Uh, maybe a Munster jersey would be appropriate <laughs> uh, and and wear them to school. And we were asking schools to get involved and just every child to donate two euro. Uh, we're also asking companies on that day to do the same. So on September 10th, to wear red or yellow uh, to work and look, if work is virtual meetings, then, you know, even if people can, can wear a, a red or yellow top or get a little bit have a little bit of fun with it and make a donation to us. And uh, we're also offering people the option of posting their selfies on our Facebook pages as well that day. Uh, and then the other two big challenges we have that are running during the month of September, and we've actually been blown away by the number of people who've signed up for our 
next virtual challenge, which is 60 miles for missions. Uh, it's, you know, you just complete 60 miles or 100K during September, whatever way you want. Uh, we set up a group. We've over a thousand people who've, who've registered uh, to be involved in that group. What's also on offer is the same challenge, miles for missions during September for companies. Uh, so all really uh, people need to do is either go to our Facebook page or you can go to our website, which is communityairambulance.ie and, and find out details on ourselves. Uh, email us, sign up um, if you're a company and you'd like to get involved in corporate partnership with us. We have some brilliant spots on our uh, on HEMS, our 109S. Uh, you know, we're we're probably the most attractive flying billboard at the moment. You know, and we've really we've a really good proposal put together for anybody who wants to get involved as a corporate partner as well. Well, when we visited you earlier in the year, you hadn't got the new machine yet. Uh, how did that go? It, it went great. It, re- it really did. It went great. Like people were looking at our new branding, wondering why were we red and yellow when we had a blue and red helicopter in the sky. Uh, so I think when the when the 109S came along, uh, certainly just what it did was it connected the pieces for us. And what we have noticed is a sizable increase in uh, activity related to just people posting, seeing us on, on Twitter and uh, landing and things like that. Now, obviously, always we say to people, if you're going to video us, we love seeing ourselves out and about but you know the, the really the big thing for us is please be careful because you know we are we do have hems exemption so we are landing in areas where the public might be or where people might be the big difference we've noticed is it's it's definitely faster so you know we our guys leave Rakul on a normal day after going on a tasking and what they've described is on the route back from Dublin so we're doing a little bit more work now to Dublin because kids are being transferred to the pediatric centers as well as adults to the burn centers in, in Tala. And what the guys have said is on their way back down, they've noticed a 10% difference in the journey back down, which is really phenomenal. Well, Michal, we wish you and the crew all the very best and the best of luck with the red and yellow day. Thanks for joining us on Squawk 7000. Thank you, Michael. A hurricane and spitfire in the Second World War, Polish number 303 squadron markings were due to take to the skies over Northern Ireland this weekend. However, the flight paths were postponed until the 9th of September due to poor weather. More information about the routings and times are available on the Flying in Ireland website. The Polish Air Force operated 14 squadrons alongside the RAF in World War II, larger than any other air force from Nazi-occupied Europe that joined the Allies. Over 17,000 men and women passed through the ranks of the Polish Air Force while it was stationed in the UK. They shot down 745 enemy aircraft with a further 175 unconfirmed. Thanks, Mark. You can find these stories and more on flyinginireland.com. And a reminder that you can listen to our long final editions. You'll find it wherever you get your podcasts and on our site, squawk7000.ie. Thanks for listening. To get the news first, subscribe now to Squawk 7000 on your favourite podcast platform.